Throughout history, humans have created countless myths and legends about strange and wondrous creatures, from dragons to unicorns. But what if some of these creatures actually existed in real life? In this video, we'll explore 20 animals from around the world that are so unusual and fantastical they seem almost mythical. From giant sloths to sea serpents, we'll delve into the stories and science behind these fascinating creatures and discover the truth behind the legends. So join us on this journey into the realm of myth and reality. These are 20 mythical creatures that existed in real life. Number 20. Dire Wolves Apparently, this is one of the favorite creatures amongst Game of Thrones fans, and it's also a famous ancient predator that's believed to have been around until the last Ice Age, hanging out with and then going extinct with the woolly mammoth and the saber-toothed cat. These wolves were not, as it was first believed, actually distant cousins of the Grey Wolf. They were an evolutionary entity all of their own. They were completely different than wolves, coyotes, and dogs that are in a separate and distinct scientific category that's unique to dire wolves. Dire wolves are known to have lived across what is now called North America between 250,000 and 13,000 years ago. They were around about 20% larger than the gray wolf that exists today, and it's believed that they moved in packs, much like the wolf of modern times, and that they hunted together, probably favoring the larger prey of bison and small mammoths. The most compelling and complete evidence of these animals and their prey has been discovered in the tar pits of La Brea in Los Angeles, where masses of ancient animals met their end in the sticky black goo. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Legend has it that centaurs, half-human and half-horse creatures, roamed the earth in ancient times. Many dismiss these tales as mere myths, but what if there was evidence to suggest that centaurs were real? Some experts believe that this creature may have actually existed, but were ultimately hunted to extinction by humans. Could it be possible that we once shared our world with these majestic beings? We'll let you be the judge. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. Griffin Half lion, half eagle, the griffin is a mythical creature that exists in one form or another in many different cultures. These made-up beasts are often associated with the royalty of ancient folklore and may be frequently found in stories where they're used to protect the treasures of kings and queens. They're especially good at protecting the gold and jewels of kings, and there's actually no evidence whatsoever that these creatures were anything more than mythical, and there's no reason at all to believe that they ever existed in real life. It is not as if people are digging up griffin bones or fossils or whatever all over the place now, is it? However, despite the fact that they were absolutely not real, there are plenty of griffins depicted in art from the ancient world. The creature with the body, back legs, and tail of a lion, and the head and wings of an eagle can be seen in paintings from ancient Greece, ancient Egypt, and across the Middle East where the griffin is called the Sherdal. Later on in medieval times, the griffin was utilized as a symbol in Christian mythology. Nowadays, it can be seen in heraldry and graces the various images of British coats of arms and traditional stuff like that. In British heraldry, though, the griffin is always shown with its wings outstretched and never closed. Why might this be? Well, if you have any ideas, go ahead and share them with the class in the comment section down below, won't you? Number 18. Chupacabra well, it's about time that we mixed it up a little bit and did something weird. That's why you love us here at the Fancy Banana after all. You should expect the unexpected. Next up for you and your lucky old eyeballs is the Chupacabra. Yes, that mythical creature from Latin American folklore. Not a real creature, but a distinctly weird looking one nonetheless. If you believe the accounts of the sightings anyways. The name Chupacabra comes from the word chupar, which is Spanish for suck, and cabra, which means goat. So there it is. This is the fearsome goat sucker of all the legends. What does it look like in the pictures that we're showing you? 
Well, the chupacabra is often depicted as a kind of dog-like animal, but with vampiric tendencies, and they're usually depicted as being completely hairless. This, I think, makes them infinitely creepier than most other potential features, like those bald cats. You know, those things are always definitely up to no good. Anyways, wherever there's been a mysterious attack on livestock in certain parts of the world, it's often the chupacabra that will be blamed. But who knows? Could it be real? Have you actually seen one? Let's get into this in the comments down below, shall we? And we can figure out this mystery together like a bunch of flipping Columbos. Oh look, my pet guinea pig Twinkle has on her trench coat already. Number 17. The Kraken. The thing with mythological creatures is that they are as big and scary and shark-defeating as you choose them to be. They are, after all, only limited by the imagination of the storyteller, so given the legend of the Kraken, we could safely assume that a sea monster that swallows ships whole might just about be able to dispense with a pesky little shark with the merest flick of a tentacle. So yes, an imaginary creature which is believed to be at least as big as a ship, but perhaps even a mile long, could definitely defeat even the most enormous shark that happens to swim in the sea today. The mythical Norse creature was known for the seafaring legends of crushing ships with its enormous tentacles are pulling them beneath the waves completely, so a piddly old little shark, well, blah, the kraken wouldn't even notice even if it did manage to land a few bites. Number 16. The Bear Lake Monster Bear Lake is a body of water in the United States of America which is on the Utah-Idaho border. It's one of the many, many places on Earth where there's a local myth that surrounds a mysterious or scary creature that's alleged to live within its depths. This monster was allegedly seen first back in the 19th century by a man named Joseph C. Rich, a Mormon settler, who wrote a series of articles about it, except that later on he recanted his story. Since then, the myth of the Bear Lake monster has become a tourist attraction. The monster has not been sighted since way back in 2002. The various sightings of the Bear Lake like monster seem to indicate that the creature is serpentine, but with legs. It's been described as being 30 feet long and light in color and very fast moving. Others have the size at 50 feet, and they also report that the monster has spikes along its back. In some instances, there have even been reports of a second monster in the lake. Weirdly, even though the originator of the story of the Bear Lake monster later admitted that it had all been a hoax and that he had made it all up, other people have continued to pretend that the monster is real and that they've seen it. It's weird how that happens. Number 15. Ogopogo Up next, we have another mysterious lake-dwelling monster. You know, everywhere wants its own Loch Ness monster. I mean, who wouldn't want all those sweet tourism dollars? This time we are in British Columbia in Canada, and it's the home of the so-called Ogopogo, which is a rather good name for a mysterious beast, don't you think? This is the monster that's said to dwell beneath the surface of the Okanagan Lake near Kelowna in Canada. It's said to be, surprise, surprise, a serpent-shaped creature of enormous proportions. It's been variously described as black or green, and it's said to have the head of a horse, or sometimes a snake, and even occasionally of a sheep. There is, naturally, a thriving tourist trade to be seen in the town, even with a $1 million reward offered back in the 1980s for definitive proof of the lake monster's existence. It was featured on Unsolved Mysteries and even had Greenpeace stepping up in its defense to protect the endangered species from hunters. The silliness really peaked during that time, but the tourism continues today. And the Ogopogo is seen just as often enough to keep the stories about its existence alive. Number 14. Montauk Monster Back in 2008, a gross, bloodless, and bloated body washed up on the shores of Montauk in Long Island, New York, and everyone freaked out. Well, probably would, wouldn't you? Anyways, this creature that soon became known as the Montauk Monster was spotted there on the beach all dead and gross and stuff, and then it was just suddenly gone. 
and nobody seemed to know why. That's the perfect way to ensure that a mystery remains mysterious. Plenty of people weighed in with a bunch of dopey ideas, as people are wont to do, and the myth of the Montauk monster was born. There was the speculation that it was a strange mutant creature that had been accidentally created in a lab at the nearby Plum Island Animal Disease Center, and naturally there were plenty of people who said it was aliens. But what do you think about it? I'm going with it was a sheep that had been in the water for a while, but how about you? Let me know what you think the Montauk monster was in the comments section down below. Number 13. Shara Badis. For our next trick, we bring you the Shara Badis, a mythical creature from ancient Greece whose name I have probably mispronounced. The Shara Badis was a huge sea monster that was believed to create massive whirlpools that were able to take down ships and drag their crew below the waves. These monsters feature in many stories with Greek heroes. This creature was believed to dwell in the Strait of Messina, living under a rock. Her next-door neighbor was the Cilia, another terrifying sea monster, and the pair would apparently work together to cause carnage in the sea. It was said that this creature would swallow masses of water as she lay in wait for passing ships, and then, when the moment was right, she would expel all that water to create a fierce whirlpool which would suck the vessels under the surface. When she's depicted in imagery, it is often portrayed as a kind of large sea serpent with an enormous thirst that made the tides change throughout the day as she drank the water and expelled it again. Number 12. The Beast of Bray Road the Beast of Bray Road goes by several different pseudonyms. It has been known as the Wisconsin Werewolf, the Bray Road Beast, but most commonly the Beast of Bray Road. This is the apparently sighted humanoid wolfish creature that was first spotted, you guessed it, on Bray Road, which is located in the rural community of Elkhorn, Walworth County, Wisconsin. The majority of the sightings took place in the 1980s and 90s, and it was a time when people didn't spend all of their lives in a screen-addled stupor, and still, occasionally anyway, went outside. So there seem to have been a lot of alleged beast sightings back then. There are probably all kinds of mysterious creatures wandering around out there these days, but we're all too fixated on our phones to even notice. After those early sightings, a local newspaper assigned a reporter by the name of Linda Godfrey to investigate. She was skeptical, but after interviewing many of the witnesses, she soon became converted and became quite the mouthpiece for the werewolf conspiracy. The Beast of Bray Road has been absorbed into Wisconsin folklore and has been the subject of many books, documentaries, and even a horror film back in 2005. Number 11. Moby Dick Yes, Moby Dick was a fictional story, but apparently there's been a little bit of poking about by historians, and they've learned that Herman Melville, you know, the author of Moby Dick, if you've ever actually read a book, took a lot of inspiration from the real-life stories of 19th century whalers and their encounters with murderous whales. Well, if you were being mercilessly hunted for your flesh and bones, then you might get a bit feisty about it all, too. So, there are several stories of these whales that caused the sailors on the whaling ships rather a lot of trouble. One of the most famous ones is that of a whale ship, Essex, that was attacked by a massive sperm whale and sunk back in November of 1820. Twenty of the crew were able to escape in smaller vessels, but only five made it to land and after being stranded for a further 89 days. Then there are more stories of deadly whales, and one which seems to have struck a chord with Melville, which was actually a gigantic albino whale with a propensity for violence that stalked the Pacific. Ocean. So there were several stories and various different whales that, having stood up for themselves against their would-be killers, got themselves a reputation amongst the whalers. Melville drew inspiration from many of them, and it seems as though there actually was a big white whale that tormented sailors in the 19th century after all. Number 10. The Hellhound the Hellhound is a mythological hound or dog-like creature that's said to be a guardian or servant of hell or the devil, or whatever underworld mythology you happen to subscribe to. There are many different versions of the Hellhound, from Cerebus and Greek mythology to the multi-headed and furious dog that guards the gates to the underworld, to the black dogs of English mythology. These are the extra-large hounds with unnatural glowing eyes and a habit of hanging out with the devil that turn up in tales across the English-speaking world. But wherever you happen to hail from, there are likely as not some kind of Hellhounds, the dogs with fire 
fiery eyes feature in folkloric tales from Latin America all throughout Scandinavia. The mythology of these creatures is perpetuated by the persistent use of them in popular culture, from television shows and movies through books and video games. Hellhounds tend to turn up with regularity whenever there's some kind of spooky supernatural element, or if the devil features in the story. It's all for you, Damien. Number 9. Kongamato here we have yet another mysterious creature. This time it's one that is spotted relatively frequently in the wetlands area of northern Zambia and parts of Zimbabwe. The Kongamato has been described as a kind of flying lizard by those that have alleged to have seen it. It was part of the mythology of the local people, but they did not actually have any reported sightings of it until the 1950s, when these dinosaur kinds of creatures were spotted in the Zambezi Basin. The thing is, though, that a whole bunch of other people have said that rather than some residual Jurassic Park style monsters or an unknown but surviving species of big old flying reptile, they were probably just a bunch of flamingos. It is always that, isn't it? You think you've seen a dinosaur scampering through your yard and it turns out it was just a neighbor's chicken. Number 8. Doar Koo and here we are in Ireland, where this time we'll have a visit with a particularly scary and unpleasant mythical water creature that's been giving people the willies since the ancient times. The name, Dowarku, basically translates as water hound, or sometimes hound of the deep. This musters up quite a lot of anxiety in the general idea of some sort of hellhound that's also a water-dwelling beast. Many have described the creature as a kind of cross between a massive otter and a hound. It doesn't sound intensely scary, but the depictions of it are kind of creepy, to be honest. There are also some places where the beast is known as the Irish Crocodile, although it bears little to no resemblance to those absolute beauties. You know how earlier we encountered a whole bunch of different cultures versions of the Loch Ness Monster? Well, this is basically the Irish kind, except that rather than being confined to one specific place or body of water, these creatures are said to inhabit many different lakes, rivers, and seas. This one, unlike some of the other tourist trap kind of beasties, is known for its bloodthirsty behavior and its taste for human flesh. This cryptid is still firmly in the mythology of Ireland, although no confirmed sightings have actually taken place, and despite the idea that these things live in many different places, nobody has ever pulled one, living or dead, from any body of water anywhere. Kinda weird, isn't it? Number 7. The Blemaye. In medieval Europe, there were an awful lot of shenanigans, to be honest. There was travel and trade between Europe and Northern Africa, and some parts of Asia. In fact, they knew more about the wider world than we would expect, except that they were so profoundly ignorant about a good deal of it as well. That's where this stuff seems to come in. The Blemaye, or Blemmy, or Blemies, however you say it, it was depicted by the medieval Europeans as a type of human who lived in Africa but did not have a head. Yep, that's what they said. How much of it was hogwash based on the total lack of genuine understanding of any other way of life, and how much of it was completely made up by storytelling travelers looking to wow a captive audience with their exploits, we may never know. One thing is certain though, there was not a race of headless people. There were, however, people who had different ways of life, different habits, and different methods of doing things than the Europeans who were poking about in their business. But the idea that they had no heads, and had eyes in their chests, and so forth and so on, that's all a load of ignorant codswallop. Number 6. Camelopard here we are again with dopey Europeans making a whole bunch of assumptions. This time we're in the animal kingdom, and yes, you are correct, that camelopard does look rather familiar. That's because it's a giraffe. Yes, these daft travelers, when they first saw the giraffe, thought that it was just too weird to be a real live earth animal, and therefore they gave it a mythical status. They figured that it acted a lot like a camel, but it had the spots of a leopard, so they mustered up the name Camel Leopard. Genius. Here's a mythical creature that very much existed in real life, and it still thoroughly does. Number 5. The Loch Ness Monster 
The legend of the Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie as she is affectionately known, has captured the imaginations of people for generations. The photographs that surfaced in the 1930s that have since been debunked and proven as fakes have given thousands of monster hunters the hope that Nessie has been hiding out in the chilly waters of Scotland's Loch Ness. Various ideas have been attached to Nessie. She could be a leftover from the dinosaurs, somehow having survived the event that wiped out the rest of her species, or perhaps she was a massive eel or maybe even a giant Greenland shark that had found herself in the wrong waters. There are as many theories as there are enthusiasts, so wherever there are myths, there are party-pooping people trying to dispel those stories. And back in 2019, some researchers from New Zealand decided to focus their investigations on the waters of Loch Ness. By extracting DNA from samples of the water from the loch, the scientists have determined what kind of creatures live there. Their conclusions, they say, have shown that there is no evidence that a prehistoric creature like the Loch Ness Monster lives there, nor a really big old Greenland shark or catfish. What they did find, though, was lots and lots of eel DNA. They say that this most likely means that there is a sizable population of European eels in the loch, but they say the DNA doesn't say what kind of size that these eels might be. In fact, they can't rule out giant eels. So the mystery of Nessie lives on, and she might be re-eel after all. Number 4. The Frilled Lizard Lizards are so cool. They come in so many weird and wonderful shapes and sizes, colors and varieties, and this one is definitely deserving of the weirdness crown. It's actually a real-life bona fide genuine creature nothing mythical about this one. The frilled lizard is so called on the account of the rather fetching collar or frill that it wears around its neck. Most of the time this particular part of its anatomy lays flat and just gives the creature a certain sort of helmety style. But when it gets stressed out or feels threatened, the frilled lizard will raise itself up on its hind legs, open its mouth, and fold out that big frilly flap to encircle its entire head. It will hiss and generally make its displeasure quite evident indeed, and it's designed to intimidate any potential attacker, and for the most part, it does seem relatively effective. Now I don't know about you, but if this lizard began any of this shiz with me, I'd be running away really, really fast, trying hard not to think about Jurassic Park. Number 3. Mermaid Although we as people do like to adorn everything, from lunchboxes to bobble hats with mermaid pictures, these are some creatures that remain well and truly in the myths and legends and not in reality. These legendary sea creatures have appeared in stories of seafaring culture since an ancient times, and they've been blamed for sinking ships and seducing sailors, and yet there has never been any proof whatsoever that these creatures exist anywhere except in the storybooks. There have been depictions of half-human, half-animal creatures and plenty of magical female types throughout history, but why mermaids have remained so firmly in our collective consciousness remains a bit of a mystery. Perhaps the unknown depths of the oceans leave so much space in our imaginations that it's just easier to believe in mermaids because the underwater world is hidden from view. Do you still believe in mermaids? Go on and have a go at me in the comments down below. It'll probably make you feel better. Number 2. Imugi The Imugi is a dragon of Korean mythology. These are important symbols in Korean tradition and folklore, and unlike the dragons that European mythology mentions are usually fiery and associated with flames and destruction, the Korean dragon, or Imugi, is associated with water and clouds. They've been considered to be the bringers of rain and are believed to have lived in bodies of water like lakes, rivers, and oceans. These imugi are said to have looked like giant serpentine creatures, and rather than being full-on dragons, they're a kind of beginner dragon, one that aspires to become a proper, fully-fledged dragon. There's also a story that says the imugi are those that have been cursed to never have horns and become real dragons. Then there's yet another story that says that if an imugi can survive for 1,000 years, then they'll be a dragon at the end of it. It's complicated stuff, and it also seems like a lot of work for any wannabe dragon types. Number 1. Unicorn 
You know what a unicorn is, of course, but is there any evidence that these mythical creatures have ever existed in real life? I know that you really, really hope that they have, or perhaps that they even still do, but I may be about to shatter your illusions, so I'm sorry about that. Unicorns have been depicted in art and literature in European culture as a kind of horse or goat-like animal with a long and usually elegant single horn that protrudes from the top of their heads. But it has not always been this way. The woodland type of creature that we've commonly accepted to be the unicorn is not the only depiction of animals with a single horn throughout history. In fact, there have been bovine type animals with a single horn found in art from the Bronze Age civilizations as well as the more standard equine description being translated from ancient Greek stuff. The notion of the unicorn's magical powers have long lingered throughout culture. Back in medieval times, the tusk of the narwhal was often fraudulently sold as unicorn horns to be used for its healing and mythical properties. But unless you count the chubby unicorn that is the rhinoceros, there is no real-life unicorn to be found. I know, it's a bummer. Well, thanks for hanging out with me on this journey through the mythology of various pretend and occasionally real creatures. Which of these mythical beings were you most disappointed were not real after all? Or do you still believe? As always, let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.